Hey YouTube. Well, I had to get my stuff going because we had about four inches of snow last night and um, I was doing some plowing and trying to clean up a little bit. I also had to put the Christmas tree in a stand for my wife so she could get that thing going. Which I hate that. I, I think they've never made a good Christmas tree stand ever. Uh. The other day I was cutting some, well those oak log, the oak log I cut the other day was the last one I cut and I had it on the thing and it snowed so you know, I had to be fooling around with that. So I had to shovel all around the uh, wood miser and also try and get some of the snow off of this thing. You know it's amazing. I know you probably can't see it but the temperature in there is 40. And it's 23 outside it's still holding above freezing so I think that's pretty neat so anyway I need to um, finish getting this wood here cut so I'm going to cut this up and then I'll put it in the garage even though it's kind of wet yet. The fire in the garage is hot enough that it'll burn this stuff up and if I have to clean the chimney I already got the ladder up there. So I'm not worried about that. Whew. And then, uh, yeah, she had to shovel a path around the coop. It's not that we had a lot of snow last night. And you can see like on the top of the chicken coop it only looks like about two inches. That's because there's heat in there and it's doesn't really let it, uh, the heat sort of comes through the roof a little bit, but yeah, so anyway, that's what I'm up to today. I want to get these logs cut and get my pile finished in the greenhouse, but I haven't gotten that far. And I also want to do a little bit about uh, some knots and stuff and trying to explain to people what it's like to grade wood.
walk. It's almost lunchtime. Ooh, I did pretty much this morning, but um, he was driving me nuts in the garage. He wanted to go out. Well, guys, they found natural, or, yeah, natural gas under our property up here, and they're driving us freaking crazy with all their trucks. Must be a, a, a hundred trucks a day driving over here. They turned it from a quiet paradise into a noisy nightmare. So many truckers are so uh, goofy that they come down this hill here, and they put their gate brake on, and there's nothing else making any noise around here. Thing for about two miles away, it was rattling the dishes in our kitchen. Put the deer tracks this morning at the bottom of the hill here, as well as turkey tracks. Those are deer tracks. These are deer tracks here too that came they came out of the woods and Um, there's a lot of things to know about lumber. The, the, the most important thing that you should know about lumber is that if you're going to be cutting lumber on a sawmill and you have no intents on selling it, that's one thing. But if you plan on selling it, especially construction grade lumber, you have to know something about it. I mean, technically you can't sell it unless there was a stamp on it. And you can get to the point where you could be a grader, but Anyway, I'm just going to give you a couple words here, like, for instance, when you have a board that has a little bit of bark on it like this, this is known as a wane, W-A-N-E, a wane, -E, um, and then any cracks in the end of the board, and like this, I don't know if you can see that one down there, let me see if I can zoom in on that, like there's a crack there, okay, so that's like a check, okay, and then, um, like this shelf I have here, I use this for stuff in the greenhouse. This is what's known as a red knot. And there's no um, decaying in it or anything, so it's a solid knot. I believe it's called fixed. But this one over here, this is called a, a black knot. And the difference between the two of them is this. A live tree grew around and surrounded a live branch. Here, the live tree grew around and surrounded a dead branch. That's why you get the bark in there the way it is, because it doesn't fuse and mix itself when, it's, uh, when both parts are alive. So the branch here was alive, so is the wood. Here, the branch was dead, <clears throat> and the wood was alive, naturally, because you can tell, you know, the tree grew a lot bigger than what the branch is. And that would be called a black knot with the bark around it. And uh, I'm going to be going through a bunch of stuff here to explain this over the next couple weeks and the sizes of knots and things like that. Because like 
a half inch to three quarter is one size, three quarter inch and a half is another, and then you know different sizes are considered different things in the grading system that we have. Uh, the thing is with hardwood, because because hardwood isn't being used structurally, it's only on furniture or or trim. You can sell that stuff without having any kind of sticker on it. But when it comes to framing lumber, like the white pine, like this stuff that's over on this skid, you need to have um, you need to have a way of grading this. And sometimes you can hire a grader to come and do stuff for you. But um, I'll explain some of what these knots are and things like that in the next upcoming days and stuff with the videos that I'm going to do. So, just to recap that a little bit, this is called a wane, okay, when you see bark on the edge of a, a piece of wood like that. So that's a wane, and then on white pine, on white pine now, this is called a red knot, okay, and then this is called a black knot. Just a little something to get us going into this subject matter. So, I got to go over and do some other stuff yet quick. Alright guys, I'm trying to get cleaned up here a little bit and it's pretty cold out. Uh, the temperature here on this thermometer is saying uh, uh, 246, 27 degrees. But that's in the sun, so it's really a lot, uh, it's a lot uh, colder yet than that. It's more like 18 degrees uh, in the shade. But I just wanted to, you to see I don't know if you can see the 60, 70, it's 74 degrees in there and a relative humidity of about 32%. That is fantastic for drying lumber as far as the, the relative humidity goes. So this is still working good even though it's this cold out. It's hard to believe that the temperature in there is in the 70s. But it is and all the snow's pretty much melted off of it. I was using the broom to push some off as well, but uh, so we're doing good with this too. Nice. Just thought you'd want to see that because I know a lot of times you see these solar things and you never get to see what they do in the winter time. So it's pretty amazing. 73, 74 degrees. Uh, guys, I wanted to get back to that thing about the knots. Um, I had said that this is a red knot and this is a black knot because of the bark around it and that this one, this knot was live when the tree grew around it. This branch was dead. I should say the branch of this knot. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show though, and I had aimed at this with the camera and I didn't realize it. Um, uh, the difference between knots is a, there's a sound, what's called a sound knot and an unsound. A sound knot are like the ones you're looking at here that don't have any decay in them, okay? Those are sound. Like the, you can see up in there, that's a sound um, knot. But the ones that have decay in them, like for instance, well this one's completely gone. Uh, I was trying to find something that has a little decay in it. I guess it's sort of like a wane almost, but I don't have anything here that I gotta be thanking, thank, thankful that I don't have any with uh, decay in them. But anyway, you can tell the ones that have decay, they're sort of like broken up and stuff. Let's see if I can find something here. No, those knots are. And what I'm getting at with this video is that. Um, is about selling the wood. See the problem with this country here is we have a lot of people who say you have to have all kind of degrees and you know things to uh, be able to do stuff. So what we do, what we have in this country is an organization that grades framing lumber and you can't sell framing lumber to someone uh, to meet the specs of this framing work that they're gonna do unless you have a stamp on the wood. Which to me is a lot of baloney because any carpenter that's worked in uh, 
construction for a while, can look at a piece of wood and tell you whether it's any good for what he's about to use it for or not. Now that's not to say that there wouldn't be people out there who, you know, would use anything because they're either cheap, don't have the money or whatever, but, you know, I can understand having these laws like this, but it should be a lot easier to take a test to be able to, to show what knowledge you have. I know when I was teaching at a trade school once um, as an adjunct, they had a guy come there. Uh, they wanted him to get a freaking four-year bachelor's degree in, in uh, being a uh, Finnish carpenter. That's ridiculous. You don't need a degree to be a carpenter. The only thing is, is uh, if the company that are hiring you, if the companies insist that you have a degree in order to hire you, and some of them do because a lot of kids don't bother to read, they can't spell, so, you know, that's why they want the degrees, but technically you don't need to have those degrees. This is a sound knot here. These are sound. This would be a black knot because it has a bark around it. Now this knot, you can see there's a line there, but it's still sound because there's no deterioration. It's not, uh... Now this one here, you can see this knot here is, uh, um, uh, started to uh, get bad. So that one there would be unsound. Yeah, we're going to go through a lot of this stuff. This is a check here, okay? A break that's actually from drying. I mean, you can see, I don't know why that one's not painted. All the rest of them are painted. Uh, there's some on the top. This is a maple. I had cut one maple tree down um, when I was making room for the, uh, the kiln. And man, that tree, while I was cutting it, it was literally bending. I mean, I had a 10 by 10 cant. And the cant was actually bowing so hard that it pulled itself off the bed in the middle about an inch or so. I know this might seem, seem a little monotonous to you, but I'm just trying to give anybody that's going to be building a kiln a little bit of an idea what these solar kilns are like. So now you can see it's 20 degrees out here. There's no sun on the thermometer. And... Uh, the sun's also off the kiln and it's not, it's almost down behind the house there so you're not going to get any more sun today. But it's still 52 or 50 degrees in there yet. Relative humidity is up to 50 now because the sun's not uh, shining on this thing. Um, I don't think the kiln, let me see if the kiln threw any water out here. No. But I know that this uh, wood in here is at 8 and 9%, so I just want to keep it from gaining any extra um, moisture on it. That's why I have the fans running. Hey YouTube. Um, I just wanted to show you a little something. These are the oak flitches that I took off of the sawmill this morning that you saw me cutting up, and I'm burning them. Now, they say that 18% is the best um, uh, percentage of uh, moisture content that helps the wood to burn real well. Now this is some pine that I just want to see what this is here that I had in here five six percent and this stuff really lights up nice. I use this for kindling to get the fire going but I've been throwing this oak in there and I've been surprised that it's burning even though it has, I thought it had a lot more moisture in it that, than it does. So, um, just to give you an example here. Um, hang on a second. Okay, so you just saw me open this up. And 22, yeah, 22%. So really, that's not that far from 18%. I mean, it's a little high moisture compared to, you know, wood that's been dried better. But um, it's amazing to me that this wood was, this was a log that was cut in May. Let's see, May. We cut these oak in May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That's seven months. And it already lost, um, I would say more than half of its uh, moisture content through the summer. Now we had a very warm summer but um, pretty amazing. So you know they call seasoned wood. What is seasoned wood? Is it 
uh, a certain season or you know like is it from spring till fall or what in reality what it is is when the wood is at 18 percent so this wood is a uh, 22 percent and if I leave it sit by the stove here in no time at all it will be down to uh, 18 percent probably overnight it would go down almost that much just thought you might want to see that. I got a mess here. I dumped the wheelbarrow basically on the floor, but I got concrete so I can sweep it up. So I'm going to sweep this up quick and then uh, finish splitting these two pieces so I have stuff ready for tomorrow. I'm fixing the fire for the night because it's getting late already.